What's up guys, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. In this video, what I wanna do is talk a little bit more about side effects since I've been on a side effects kick the last few weeks. I wanna talk about extrapyramidal symptoms or extrapyramidal side effects, specifically akathisia. So you may not know at all what I'm talking about, so let's just start with some basic definitions and get into what, that, what this stuff means. So extrapyramidal symptoms or side effects, what do they include? So they include things like acute dystonic reactions, Parkinsonism, which like the name implies, would be symptoms similar to Parkinson's disease, right, which is a neurological disorder, a dopamine deficiency. Akathisia, and we're gonna talk about specifically what akathisia is, and the maybe dreaded and most, uh, most difficult to not only treat but also to, uh, to deal with as a patient is tardive dyskinesia. And tardive dyskinesia is sort of like a movement disorder of the mouth and tongue specifically. It tends to be very um, embarrassing for patients and it tends to be something that is uh, related to antipsychotic uh, use. So that's another one. And we'll break each one of those down in separate videos, but I wanted to start with akathisia because I actually think akathisia can be maybe one of the more difficult side effects of these medications for patients to deal with. So the next question becomes, what is akathisia? So akathisia is a movement disorder like we described, and it's characterized by this subjective feeling, right? The patient has a subjective feeling of inner restlessness. So the subjective feeling of inner restlessness is accompanied by a psychological distress related to the need to move. So basically this is, this could be summed up as the patient feeling like they need to move, right? That's how we could kind of frame this in a very simple way to make it uh, conceptually easy to understand. So I have this inner subjective feeling of restlessness and I have this psychological distress associated with the need to move. So what, what would you see then in terms of the patient if you were observing them? So I have a great video clip that I'm gonna put in here that I'm gonna talk you through, but I'll just say a couple things about it. You might see that the patient fidgeting, you might see them moving in place back and forth, or you could have them tell you, you know, doc, this is just a really uncomfortable feeling I have. I have this just really uncomfortable sensation uh, and need to move. And this is different than restless leg syndrome because in restless leg syndrome, the person is trying to go to sleep and they have this inner urge or sensation in their leg where they feel like they need to get up and move and walk around. So it's not happening when they're going to sleep, this is happening all the time with, with uh, akathisia. It's a little different than restless leg. Now, in some cases, this can get pretty serious. People have been known to be more aggressive because of it, you know, because it's irritating, right? It's psychologically distressing, and now you have, you have the person getting irritated and aggressive. Sometimes it can lead to violent outbursts, and even suicidal thoughts, right? If you have this going on all the time and it's constant nuisance to your existence and impairing your function, well, you might feel like, you know, this isn't worth doing anymore. What's the point, okay? So that's kind of some of the things we'll see. And in the video, I just wanna kind of walk through that video real quick. So one of the things you first notice is that classic sort of moving back and forth, right? The, feet kind of going in place, the person kind of making almost like a like a rhythmic motion with their upper body, right, while they're eating. You can see all these things in the video very clearly, and um, that's classic. That's seen a lot on inpatient units and a lot in patients who have been, you know, kind of in mental health treatment for very long periods of time, and of course those using um, dopamine blocking medications. Now. It's usually associated with what we call the first generation antipsychotics or typical, also known as typical. They have all these silly names for these things that make it kind of complicated to see what we're talking about. So these would be the first generation dopamine blocking medications, also known as a typical antipsychotic, or I'm sorry, typical antipsychotics. But they happen, they, but it also happens with second generation drugs, right? So then we have second generation antipsychotics or so-called atypical antipsychotics, which would be the newer medications that we've talked about in previous videos. That would be things like orlanzapine or, or quetiapine. So there's a really, really famous trial, which I'll link up in the description as well, and it was called the KD trial. And this KD trial really sort of looked at discontinuation of antipsychotics but they also looked at secondary measures, things like uh, side effects. 
And one of the reasons why someone might discontinue a, me a medication is because of adverse side effects. Honestly, in psychiatry, I would argue the most common reason people stop medication is because of side effects. So what did the Katie trial find in terms of the medications they were looking at? So they actually found that akathisia occurred in 5% of patients on orlanzapine and those on quetiapine. So 5% of patients on orlanzapine, which was found to be the best medication in this, in, aside from clozapine, was found to be the, the, one of the best medications in terms of length of time people stood on it. But it still runs the risk of akathisia in 5% of the cases. Now on risk for risperdal or risperdone, and perfenazine, the risk of akathisia or akathisia was found in 7% of the, of the patients. So 7% of those on risperdone or perfenazine was, had akathisia. It's interesting because perfenazine is a first generation or typical antipsychotic, which we think of as having more of a risk for these type of, these type of side effects. So kind of interesting that that fell with risperdone and was only a few percent more than orlanzapine and quetiapine. The worst of the bunch was ziprazidone. And that's unfortunate because ziprazidone has a great metabolic profile and doesn't cause a lot of weight gain or increase triglyceride levels or metabolic side effects, basically. So ziprazidone is a great option if somebody doesn't want to gain a lot of weight or have metabolic side effects. But unfortunately, 9% of patients on ziprazidone had akathisia. And I've also seen this actually a lot, and, and it's unfortunate because it's another good medication in terms of metabolic profile and QTC prolongation, lorazidone. So lorazidone is basically a derivative sort of of, of zoprazidone, and that medication um, also causes akathisia in, in many cases. And clinically, I've seen this quite a bit in, in many clinicians that I've worked with and patients that I've worked with that have been on this med have said they've, you know, they've had to lower the dose or maybe not titrate it as efficiently because of akathisia. So that's the basics of akathisia. If you guys have questions or comments, please drop them below. I'm happy to talk more about this and in more depth if it's helpful to you. And please like and subscribe to the channel. We will continue making stuff that is all things mental health.